So I've just been out doing some trail clearing with the axe. The axe that I was using is the steel forestry hatchet, which I've done some modifications on, tuned it up to make it a little bit better performer, more comfortable in my hand. Um, so stay tuned to see how the process I used to get it to work as well as I wanted it to. And um, if you say till the end, we'll see my thoughts and conclusions and the process I followed. In the video I had on uh, bushcraft axes, this is one of the actions, one of the options I discussed was the steel forestry hatchet. And um, in, the, in the video, I did say that it was, I quite liked the head material. It's the, the steel's quite good. It was made in Italy, I think, by Rinaldi. And I have got a Rinaldi axe and I do like their steel. But I also said that I didn't like the handle. It's quite thick, it's covered in varnish. So what I want to do in this video is shake the handle, get the varnish off, uh, make a leather cover for it. It just came with this rubber cover and put a nice sharp edge on to the blade. And then I'll see how much improved it is. So I've done some, just a very rough profile. I'm going to use a rasp um, and start shaping this. And as I go, I'll just see how it feels in my hand. And then once I'm happy with it, um, I can clean it up and then I'll make a, a cover for the, for the blade. So stick around and hopefully we'll see the finished article. So I'm gonna start off with the with a couple of rasps. This is just a normal cabinet maker's rasp and this is a Shinto rasp. These are really good bits of kit. They're pretty inexpensive and they really do remove a lot of wood. And the design is really good because the actual uh, shavings and sawdust fall through rather than getting trapped in the teeth of a normal rasp. It is quite aggressive though, so this is good for doing more shaping. So what I've done first, I've just taken off planes, like flat planes, to the shape that I'm starting to like, did the pommel a bit. So I've just taken a bit off the side here to reduce it down. I've shaped the back, roughly according to my original drawing, or my original drawing on the, on the actual handle. And then it's already starting to feel a lot more comfortable in my hand. So I'm just taking my time. Um, it's going quite quickly with this Shinto rasp anyway, it does work very quickly. It's only been going about 10-15 minutes and already it's a much more comfortable hand shape in my hand. This bit here is still a bit thick because if you want to do any carving you want this to be comfortable. So I will take a bit more off or round on that. So before I start rounding it really I just want to get the basic shape down in sort of flat planes and then when I'm happy I can round it all off, but that's not taking long and it's already feeling quite a lot more comfortable. Okay, so I have a bit more shaping with the Shinto rasp and also the cabinet rasp, which is a bit finer. Um, I refined it down now, fairly getting pretty close to what I'm happy with now. It's a nice shape in my hand, it's feeling quite comfortable. One of the things, I've got a carving axe which narrows in on the inside and it gets a nice grip for your hands if you're doing carving. So I've, I've narrowed it down in the central piece here. So it's sometimes nice to pick up your other axes and see what you like. Um, and that's probably one of the advantages of an axe like this with a thick handle, that you can actually shape it. You've got material to shape it down to, to actually what you want to do with the axe. So if you have more specific requirements like say, for example, carving, you can actually shape it a bit more to be comfortable for carving, you know, and whatever else you want to do. So, you know, I know initially the thick handle wasn't that appealing and, you know, the varnish and all the rest, but um, it was just a utility axe designed to be rugged and tough and, you know, but it does give the opportunity to fine tune it. Um, and because it's not expensive, you don't mind having a go with a rasp 
Um, this is a low risk activity, so definitely worth having a go. So our next thing, I'll probably take a cabinet scraper, clean off the last bit of the varnish. Um, it'll also help to smooth out some of the rasp marks. So I'll just use a, a basic cabinet scraper. And um, yeah, and then once that's finished, I'll, put, I'll start doing some sanding just to smooth it off. So I've just started sanding it now with some 80 grit. And I've just actually wrapped it around my trusty Openel. There's a nice um, way to hold the paper and using the round aspect of the knife allows you to get into the curves. So I'm just gonna use this now and work my way around, get the last bit of paint off, start with 80 and then drop down the grades until I'm happy. But um, yeah, it won't take too long. Something worth noting, obviously when you take the paint off, you can start seeing a bit more where the grain runs out or not. So it's not a bad piece. Um, of wood, if you can see that, um, I think it's ash, which is good for tool handles. Um, but you know, a little bit of run out there, and particularly there when I was um, shaping that portion, you can see where the grain really, it's actually quite rough there on each bit where the grain runs out. Not too important down on this section of the pommel, but clearly here would be more of a concern. But I think on a short handle axe like this, it's not that critical anyway. It's not like a long um, felling axe that has a lot of whip or tension on the handle. These short ones, they're not gonna have much tension, so it's not too bad. Um, but there's another thing to watch for when companies paint or cover their handles and paint and varnish. It's difficult to tell what the grain looks like underneath um, until you take it off. So I'm at the point now where I'm pretty happy with this um, handle now. Sanded it through a few different grades. Um, so it's nice and smooth. Not, I mean, it's not crazy smooth, but it's as smooth as I want to take it. Um, I'm not gonna put any oil on it yet. So my next step, I'll do that at the end. My next step now um, is going to be to sharpen the blade. I did a little bit of sharpening for my bushcraft axe video but I didn't want to put too much effort into it than that video because I just wanted to show the as-found situation of this axe. But now um, I'm going to, I'll just take this cover off. So I did a bit of sharpening and shaping, but nothing significant. So now I just want to finish that process off. Um, it didn't come particularly sharp. Profile is not too bad, um, but I think, it, well, it definitely does need more sharpening. So I'll do that process next. Um, and after that, um, it'll be making a cover. And I'm hoping to, well, I'm not I'm planning on not doing anything too ornate as a cover, because I want to make this a simple project, keep it as a simple project that perhaps um, some of you might view as something you might like to do as well. So it'll be a very simple axe cover, but it does need something. Um, that rubber cover, I mean, it's functional, but it's certainly not what you want to, you know, use long-term. So I think an axe uh, mask blade cover is going to be a, a worthwhile thing to do. The next step is to make the mask for the axe and I'm going to be starting off by cutting out the leather. Um, very simple one, just going to be riveted with a welt in it and it's not going to be anything complicated.
All right, so I cut the pieces out. Um, I cut out a welt, which I've put in the middle, and I've glued them together. When it's dried, I'll just put some rivets in, and then we're good to go. Right, so there we have it. It's the finished article. So I've put some linseed on the handle now, put an edge on the blade, smoothed off the edges a little bit just with some sandpaper because they were a bit rough. But it is, it's is—it's a nice straight blade, a Rhineland pattern, I believe, with a nice flare. Um, it's finished up quite nicely, so there's no more of that paint on there, just linseed finish. Trimmed the handle out quite nicely. It's going to be quite comfortable to carve with, um, and it's a nice small little axe. Something to, you know, I wanted to compare it to, which is quite a common bushcraft axe, is the Franz Falls Brooks Small Forest Axe. And interestingly, the head weights are very similar, but the bit length is quite a lot um, bigger on this one. So this is actually more similar to my carving axe, which is a small axe, but a longer bit. It actually really highlights how small the Franz Falls Brooks bit is. Very small, so what that does mean is that your efficiency is lower with an axe like that because you have to cut a lot more um, times, obviously, to get the same effect. The other um, difference between these two is the handle length. So that was the length that the handle came, and the grass falls brux is obviously longer. Now that's quite handy for putting in your rucksack, it's easier to put inside. But it doesn't actually fit as easily on this loops on the outside of a normal standard rucksack. But um, what it does mean is it fits inside quite quite easily. So I think in terms of bushcrafting, it's going to be quite good for your smaller tasks. Certainly carving is going to be quite a nice carving axe. And um, it's lightweight, pretty capable. And we saw in the other video, you could do all the splitting tasks and the cutting tasks for the small small scale wood, probably equally as well as this one. And this one's a fraction of the price. So this one, 20 pounds, had to put a bit of effort in, but nothing serious, kept it quite simple um, and worked out pretty well. So I think that's a really good option for a cheap, but very effective and good quality bushcraft axe. So the steel forest hatchet or axe um, is now a very serviceable tool. Um, so this was the mask that I made for it, the leather mask, very simple construction, three bits of leather, there's a welt in there. This is just the leather I had, so it's quite thin, but um, I wanted to, I didn't want to buy anything special, just riveted, it didn't stitch it or anything, and it's got the Sam Brown stud. So very simple construction, just flips over and clips on there. But it does mean I can put it in my bag quite easily. It's easy to remove and it'll keep my the blade safe and my fingers safe. And that's in the end of it. So I hope that was useful to anyone out there and thanks for watching.